the conflict in Lebanon has uh, ended up uh, risking a wider Middle East war between Israel and the Arab nations. The tensions have escalated between Israel and Hezbollah now after killing the Hezbollah top commander Hassan Nasrallah. Israel has also eliminated the Hezbollah Executive Council Vice President Nabil Kwok and seen a member of the intelligence operative in Lebanon's Beirut. Now in a fresh Israeli airstrike, 15 people have been killed in Lebanon. Meanwhile, Iran has requested an urgent meeting of the United Nations Security Council to address Israel's recent actions in Lebanon. The request comes in wake of Israel's killing of key Hezbollah leaders. Iran has also announced a five-day mourning for the killing of the Hezbollah leader Nasrallah. Iran uh, Leverako, he joins me on the telecast. He is uh, immigrated to Israel in 1991. He served in the Israeli Defense Forces for nine years. He's a retired sergeant. Thank you so much for joining me on the telecast. What next in wake of uh, the conflict between Lebanon, conflict between Hezbollah and Israel? At this time, Israel is risking having a massive conflict in the Middle East that will be heralded with Iran sending more of its proxies to fight against Israel. Well, thank you for having me. And let me just say is we, we are risking that, but we don't have a choice because since October the 7th, uh, Hezbollah have fired 8,000 missiles into our territories, number one. And number two, uh, because of that, we've had between 80,000 to 100,000 residents that have been pulled out of their homes because it's too dangerous to live on our border. Hezbollah are uh, uh, breaking international law, Resolution 1701, which basically says that they have to pull back 20 miles or about 34, 36 kilometers, which they defiantly are not doing. So Israel doesn't have a choice but to do what we've been doing and what we will continue to do until the threat on our northern border is eradicated. And by the way, while it may be looked upon as a negative that the war may escalate, do you know there's a lot of people who are looking at this as a positive, including Syrians, Lebanese, Iraqis, and Iranians. There are Iranians celebrating at different embassies all around the world because they have been under the tyranny of Hezbollah uh, terrorists and radicals and they are thanking Israel for what has happened. So, Right, but when we, see, when we see all these uh, leaders from the Gulf nations, you speak about Iran and we speak about Iraq, we're talking about Turkey, uh, Fatah, Hezbollah, Lebanon, statements have been coming in condemning the fatal well, attack the, the that killed, that that killed the Hezbollah commander. The in, in, okay, so, so interesting to at this point of time, what the world is anticipating is an end to war that has gone yeah, on no, for no, a no, year no, now. Sorry. How, the how are there steps, are there steps are that are going states. to be taken by the Israeli government to ensure that there is peaceful de-escalation in terms of that, in terms of the, the conflict that like i said that has that has uh, risked a global uh, risked a middle eastern conflict that could then lead to massive ram ramic ramifications on both sides yeah well let me just uh, bring things into correct context the the nations that you mentioned who are condemning israel can you re repeat them M maybe i can repeat them turkey Russia, Hamas, uh, who else was it that you mentioned? These are all rogue states or radical Islamic fundamentalists who do not want democracy in the Middle East and they're doing all they can to eradicate this one and only democracy which takes up only one out of the 122 times larger uh, size nations that live here who are basically radical Islamic nation. So uh, the fact that they are condemning it, really, it's not a surprise. But the people that want freedom, the people that want freedom from these nations, 
they are celebrating. They, okay. they're, they're how do you react? How do you react at this point of time? The statements that have come from France and United United Nations, Germany, and India as well, who who have been very guarded and cautious in making remarks in this war between Hezbollah and Israel. They have uh, not condemned uh, the attacks on the Hezbollah commander and the other Hezbollah group leaders, but they have neither come out and spoken about Israel's victory over the Hamas quote-unquote terrorist uh, organizations and Hezbollah terrorist organizations. Yeah, and that's a very good question you're asking. And you know what, it's good that they are pressuring Israel to, uh, to de-escalate the situation, that it will not end up into a larger scale war. Listen, we don't want that either. Israel doesn't want this war. Israel didn't start this war. But like I said, what does a nation do when 8,000 missiles are rained down on us, terrorizing our people? We've got, as I mentioned, 60 to 80 to 100,000 residents who have not been allowed to go back to their homes. 50,000 acres of land has been burned. Uh, we've got no choice to do what we're doing and I agree with these nations and there's people from Israel we're also pressuring our government uh, in some ways not to de-escalate things so uh, I'm not I'm not upset with the United Nations with France with Germany I think it's good to put pressure on us and that's a part of a democracy freedom of speech but they need to understand that we've got to do what we've got to do and hopefully the sooner we do it the quicker things will de-escalate. And I think it's a brilliant thing that the Israeli Defense Forces are doing. We are not targeting civilians. We are going for the leaders. We're going for the heads. We are hoping that it will uh, uh, cause division and disgruntment among the armies of these people. And you know what? All they have to do is either go back the 20 miles that the United Nations are asking which they are breaking the law all they have to do is to go back or the other option is that they need to surrender the moment they stop firing missiles and surrender then it's all over okay all right moving on in the wake of uh, the two state theory uh, how forceful is israel in its attempt to forge an agreement in that direction with palestine well, look, the problem is right now, the Gaza Strip is a mess. It's going to take approximately 15 years to clean up the Gaza Strip. But let's just say it, it is cleaned up. Uh, uh, do you think the Israelis would be wise to allow people like Hamas or Fatah, uh, the Palestinian Authority, who have in their charter a call for the destruction of the state of Israel? Do you think it would be wise of us to let them rule? No, it won't. So one of the goals is that the Israelis are going to try and work with either the United Nations or some of the Arab nations who have made peace with Israel. This is called the Abraham Peace Accords. And maybe there'll be some kind of way that we can re-educate the Palestinian people, uh, take out of their textbooks, to hate Israel, to destroy Israel, and maybe to make genuine peace. When we see that, and we feel that our borders are safe and secure, then we will you know, make as big a steps as we can to make peace. We did that in 2006, okay. let me remind also, the viewers. Okay, fair enough. Uh, taking a look at uh, how the war has uh, escalated, uh, there was a combing operation that was conducted by Israel by the IDF along the borders of the Gaza Strip against Hamas. You have moved on to the northern side of Israel along the Lebanon-Syria border. Uh, are you, is it safe to say right now uh, that Hamas has largely been controlled and therefore the movement of troops and arms and ammunition on the northern side of, uh, of, of Israel? Well, yes, it is uh, to some degree. We know that there, there were 24 Hamas battalions at the beginning of this war. We have taken out, neutralized 23 of them. 
and there are partial remains of that last uh, battalion, they are fighting. They are still sending rockets. If they stop sending rockets, well, we wouldn't need to go in and stop them. But they continue. But I agree with you. For the most part, uh, Hamas have been neutralized. Um, but they're still there. They're still uh, under the ground. You know, there's almost 300 miles of tunnels under the ground that hasn't been destroyed yet. And we are going to do that. It's going to take about two and a half years. So, uh, And also inside of Judea and Samaria, which is politically called the West Bank, there are lots of terror cells of Hamas, as there are in Lebanon as well, that we still have to deal with. So the ideology is still there. They still have operatives working in Judea and Samaria and Lebanon. And so they are also uh, uh, in our eyesight and we are doing all we can to stop their terrorization. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.